All right, my name's John Hickson. Um, I am a senior software engineer at IX Systems, and I work on the following operating systems in various ways. <laughs> and I also, I, I work on a lot of various open source, just in general. My, my primary realm is FreeNAS. That's, and that's how I came into the world of, N, of NFS for ACLs. <coughs> Now, why, why would you want to give a talk on NFS for ACLs? Because, because they're hard. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I, my, in my working with FreeNAS, I, I maintain Samba on FreeNAS, and the primary problem that I, I see on a daily basis with Samba is is NFS for ACLs, is permis per permissions in general. People, people get very confused about permissions. They, they lock themselves out. They can't access their shares. They can't, um, they just, all of, people generally just mess up the permissions really bad. And so, so any given day, I probably have about 10 tickets just on messed up permissions. And, and it cause, I have to spend a whole lot of time just looking at something that that ends up being a simple problem with uh, with an ACL, and so, so I finally, after several years of this, decided to write a paper about it. <laughs> um, so, and the, and the other thing is is, and NTFS Windows permissions they they map very well and very closely to to NFS for ACLs, and so I figured I could get. Knock two birds out with one stone. Now, what are what are some of the benefits of NFS for ACLs? So, the, what you get with NFS for ACLs that you can't get with standard traditional Unix permissions, you, you can get fine, very very fine grained access. And I'm talking primarily about. NFS for ACLs as they're implemented on ZFS and UFS. And there, there are some subtle di differences on those. I'm not talking about anything in the Linux world because I've never used that, so I have no idea how they work on Linux. Um, and they, another cool thing is that they're built into the NFS for protocol. So you don't have to do anything external. You don't have to download any external code. Any external specifications, they're, they're part of the protocol. And there, you can do more things with an NFS4 ACL <coughs> than you can with the POSIX ACL. And, and anything you can do with the POSIX ACL, you can do with an NFS4 ACL. And the reverse is not true. All right, so what is an ACL? An ACL is an access control list, and it's, it's a bunch of ACL entries that are combined into a list. Um, they are evaluated on the server, and then the order, the order does matter. So they're evaluated at the top, and it runs down until um, access is granted or not. And that's how they work. Now, uh, so an access control entry, it's a, uh, it's made up of five or, f well, four or five fields. So, but the, the first part is called the principle, and that, which I'll describe in the next slide, <coughs> that's, that describes the, the owner, the ownership of the ACL, and who the ACL is granted for. The second part of an ACL entry is the access permissions. The third part is the inheritance flags, and the fourth is the type. And I will break these down for you one at a time. So a principle is made up of a, of a tag and possibly a qualifier. 
So you know, the, there are three types of tags that do not have a qualifier. And these are, these are probably, you could probably map these pretty closely to your traditional Unix permissions. So the owner, this maps to the owner, you know, in your traditional Unix permission model. The group, same thing. Everyone, this is a little bit different. A lot of people get, are confused by this. It, it does not map the same to, uh, to other in the traditional Unix model. Everyone in an NFS4 ACL entry, it, uh, it, it means every, everyone, including the owner and the group. It's not necessarily just other. And then <clears throat> if you, you can, so these are generic. Here you can actually specify entries that have users and groups. And that's where you will use a U and then you'll have a qualifier, which would be your user, and a, a G or a group, and then you specify the group. And that, that's what makes up a principle. And so you can have several of these in an in a access control list. And I think I just covered this. So the, the, this pretty much speaks for itself. The, Username, that means the, uh, the entry applies to a user group, same thing. These are all the various access permissions that you can have in the access permission field. Um, all the ones that, that apply on FreeBSD, I'm gonna go over here in a second, one at a time. So the, the first three I, I grouped together because these map directly to your traditional Unix permissions. So RW and X, read, write, and execute. They, it's the same, it works the exact same as you would expect it to in traditional Unix permissions or in and POSIX ACLs as well. <coughs> and here is my example. I, Hope you guys can see this. Can you guys see this? <laughs> yes. Okay. So, I, I I just I I did this this way so I can show each how how this interacts with the with the U, U mask. So, I created a directory with the more restrictive to more open U mask, three different directories, and then. I would, I'm showing here what, what the permissions look like when you do a standard ls minus l. And then over here, let's see. <coughs> I show that the, um, when, when you create the directories with the U mask, how the permissions look. And in each case, you'll see here, so in the 022, Example, you get a 755, which is expected down here in the 002775 and the 000777. So the, the only purpose of showing it this way is to show standard UMAX, UMASK with the, and then how your typical read, write, execute will show and to show that when you show the ACL that, that it turns out as you would expect it. I hope that makes sense. The, the P access permission, it is, uh, it's just for, create, it's just there to, to allow subdirectory creation. It's, <coughs> it's ignored for files. All right, so what do I do here? Um, so I have the, the directory I created in the last example. <coughs> I'm showing your standard, the ACL, how it's looking. Um, what I do I have a P. So here there's, there's no P. So I try to create a directory here. I get permission denied. And here I'm adding the P. 
and, and this, is, this is a thing I dislike about set F ACL. I'd really like to have something like CH mods plus P, something like that. But anyway, <coughs> I, I add the permission here along with everything else that was there. So I'm showing you here what the ACL looks like once I've added the P. So it's there now, right there. And I come down here, I make the directory, and, and I'm able to create the directory. Yes. So the question is, can you add, term, can you, is there a feasible way to take the existing ACL, add the permission you want, and then add it back? Yes, there is. So what you can do is you can get a f ACL, a file, and you can redirect that to a file, and then set up ACL has the ability to read the ACL from a file. So you can you redirect it to a file, edit the file, and then you set up ACL on whatever you're, you're setting on. So yeah, no matter how you look at it, these things, they're a pain in the ass. They, but that at least, that, that is a little bit easier. But I'd still like, I'd like the ability to just say set up ACL plus P or you know some, something along those lines. Minus A? Yeah. Dash A, modify the ACL by inserting a new ACL entry. Um, I don't think it works that way. I, here, I can pull up the man page. <laughs> um, what, when, when, you can, when you modify the ACL, ACL, here, what you normally do is like this guy right here, yeah. I mean, if I, I mean, you might have just found something I'm not aware of. So, but I, I, I don't believe there's an easy way to look, do it, because otherwise, I don't think I'd have been doing it like this all this time. But I'd be glad to be wrong. Um, where, where, here? Okay. <laughs> Wait, are you talking about right here? No. Oh, here? Yeah. Okay, so that that's that isn't necessary. I mean, they're missing because those access permissions are missing. That's that's just how it's it's displayed. So the order it'll show it in. Um, what normally comes after here is up here. So the this doesn't have. Oh, let's see. Let's go back a few slides. Okay, so after the P would be these guys. So since those aren't set, it's showing those dashes. When you set that, when you set an ACL, you, you aren't required to do the dash, but when you, when, it, when you list it, it will show the dash if it's not set. Okay. Where was I? Yeah, right there, okay. All right, okay, so capital D is for delete child, and this just this uh, gives you the ability to delete subdirectories. And so a lot of these examples, I like to show, what show, really shows how they work is to do a deny entry. <coughs> So, all right, so we add an entry here at the very end with a big capital D for denying that. And so, yeah, some of these I shortened out, and so it might seem weird. It's like, why is that there? But that, just know that this directory exists. And so the directory foo exists, and we're in the top level directory, this uh, example 002. And I, I, I tried to remove the directory here that has the deny entry on it, and it's not permitted. And here, this minus x3, that deletes the 
third, well, third entry starting from zero. Um, so that's, so I remove it here. I get the ACL to show you that it's gone. And then here, I remove the directory and I'm, I'm successfully able to do it. Lowercase d, this is the ability to delete a file, which should be straightforward, but you never know. Okay, so I show you, I, I create a file here, I get the, I get the ACL, and let's see, so I, I do a standard chmod, <coughs> I get the ACL to show you that it's uh, there, well, not there. And then here, I create an, a deny entry on the file. I get the entry, you see it's there. So now, when I go to try to delete the file, it gives me this, but basically, that's, that's no. If, if you continue to type yes or no, whatever, it, it won't let you which I apparently removed. Um, so I, I nuke that last ACL, I go back here, I remove the file, and I'm able to remove the file. If any of these aren't making any sense, please speak up, because they're weird. All right, so Lowercase a, this gives you to be, the ability to read the file attributes. And by file attributes, that's like the, the stat structure. <coughs> Not necessarily the ACL. That's another, that's another um, access permission. But <coughs> All right, so here I get the ACL for this example directory, and let's see, so we have the, let's see, where are we at? We have the, have no A here for grouper er, everyone. I forgot to mention, I'm gonna go back to, to the beginning here, because I forgot to tell you guys, um, if you own the file, there's a certain set of a, of a, permissions that you're given so that you can't lock yourself out. Um, so owner will always be given the ability to, I believe, to set the ACL and uh, write, I think. But it, it, no, no matter what, you, you, can't, you can't lock yourself out if you own the file, and that's by design. I guess some people have some problems with that. Um, <laughs> Um, so back to this example, um, I add a everyone deny ACL entry here. I list it to, to show you. And I, I try to read the ACL on the file. And here I get the big fat no. I can't read the stat structure because I'm not allowed to read attributes on, the, on this file or directory. And drop down to here, I remove it. I get FACL it, I can see it, and all is well. Capital A, it's, it gives you the ability to, to write the tribute, so not, I, I don't think I put an example for that, yeah. Um, that just means you, you can write a tribute, so you can, you can change the stat structure. <clears throat> Read extended attributes and write extended attributes. These are not used by FreeBSD um, because ZFS doesn't implement these. Lowercase c for read ACL. This gives you the ability to read the ACL on a file or directory. All right, so let's see, we got my example directory here. <coughs> and as usual, it's it's your ba this is your basic ACL here that's you know owner gets most permissions, group and everyone very limited. Um, here I I remove 
everything on the, the everyone to be even more restrictive. And I show you show you what it is here. Come down here. I'm I'm a non-owner, and I try to read the ACL on the file, and and FreeBSD tells me no. Um, so I I come back here. I I give it. I give it the ability to read the ACL and verify that. I read it here and as a non-owner and I am able to, to read it. Capital C, write ACL. It lets you write an ACL. I don't think I did, no, I did do an example, okay. So it's just, same thing as the last one, except for you can write it. Um, here's our example. I do a, a I, I attempt to to change permissions to read only, and this tells me no. I update I update the ACL to allow the ACL to be written. So I come here. And, and this is kind of the lazy way out. I, I could have did this using setf ACL. Um, I don't remember why I chose chmod, but it still demonstrates it the way it works. Because anyway, so I change, I change it to 644, and I'm able to do so. But okay, so this gives gives you the ability to change the the user or group ownership of the file. So town and change group ish. Okay. Our our standard ACL. Um, I try to change ownership of the file to myself. I'm denied. Um, I set the ability here, right there to everyone and uh, verify that it's there. And I, I change ownership to me and success. S for synchronize is not implemented on FreeBSD and it's used on Windows and I still am I'm still not entirely clear on its purpose even on Windows. It has something to do with synchronization on a file. I, I tried to understand it, but it's over my head. With the ownership, if you do an LS minus AL, does it show the new ownership, or is that only when you like a get you know, something special with the NFSV4 stuff? Okay, so the question is if you, for the ownership, if you do an LS minus AL if it'll show the the new owner. Yes. So, yes. The, the, the answer is yes. <laughs> so you change ownership, it'll be just like you did it using town. Um, all right. Um, the next field is the inheritance flags. And so we have, I'm, I'm going to go over these ones too, so pay attention. Okay, F is for file inherit, and that means files will inherit that ACL entry. So here's our example directory. Um, I've given this everything. Um, this, this is where your um, inheritance flags are, and there's none here. Uh, I, I create a, a new file, foo.txt. I get the ACL on that file. And, well, get, getting default permissions here. There's no inheritance flags here. I come back here, and this wrapped around. Um, I, I set the ACL here to have, uh, let's see, I do file inherit here. So I give, I, I set file inherit on all the ACL entries. And then I, um, do I create the file here? <coughs> ah, I guess I. You, you create another file below 
Yeah, I guess I, I create a file, but I'm not seeing where I create it. I think that slipped. Okay. Um, well, just know that somewhere after I've done this, there's a creation of by that text. I, I'm sorry that's missing. So anyway, so I create this bar.txt file. I, I get the ACL on it, and here's the, the capital I, which indicates that these entries are all inherited. So this, this directory says inherit, 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 file inherit, create the file, inherit, inherit, inherit. And the permissions are equal, so it works. That's the way inheritance works. Does it work like CMS, where if you set it, it'll change your properties and inherit it? Like if you set Are you talking about inherit, like as in a data set inherit? Yeah. Or? So if you go back, and so like, uh, let's say your very first entry on right there, let's say that was just a little bit different than group, and you set it to inherit, would it inherit the owner? Okay, hold on, hold on. So, on the group, like if I if I change the permissions, the access permissions, yeah. yes. So inherit. Okay, so in the inheritance flags go here. This group entry, I can change this to be nothing, are are very minimal. Your most basic permissions, and and if I set the inheritance here, here for file, we'll do directories next. But if I set it for file and I have group that's very restrictive, when you create a new file, those permissions will be identical. They, they will be just as restrictive. I'm asking if that would then change that permission, if it would reset it to whatever its parent was. So, you have foo, you have bars, right? foo. Change uh, bars, group, whatever entry, and then you set that inherit flag on bar, would it then re-inherit foo, or would it stay how you have it set? So after the inheritance, if you go through and change things, does it re-inherit or does it trickle back? Oh, no, 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 the, no. Once it's set in stone, so you're talking about like dynamic inheritance, like like at the very top and no, 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 no. <laughs> we don't have that. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't know if you'd want that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I believe Windows does the same thing unless you recheck it or you tell you go through and cl click the box that says. Um, click the box that says apply to children. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So, so yeah, we're we're still no better than Windows, but we're better than Windows. <laughs> Not well. <laughs> Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> okay. D is for directory inherit. This is the, it works the same way as file inherit, but it's for directories, so I am not showing this example. Lowercase i is for, in, it's, it's for inherit only, which You, you have so you have to use I with file or directory inherit and, and it means that files and directories only the files and directories beneath the current directory will inherit the ACE. Yes. And I'm sure I have an example here. Um, so let's see. We got our full-fledged permission set on this um, example directory. <coughs> I set inherit only for, for group and everyone, um, which here we are, so yeah, F and I, and so we're using file inherit. And under here, I create the, I create a foo.txt file, I get the ACL and the group and everyone entries get that get get that entry. They inherit it, whereas owner does not. 
Yeah. This this one and the next one they're they're kind of hard to. Um, In this case, because it's F, it'll only be files. But 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 I, but you can set you can set F D and I and then. Um, uh, yes, and and it's it's basically for for this particular flag, it's it's almost as if. These entries don't exist, and that their sole purpose is is for what is create what's created beneath it. If that makes sense, the lowercase n. This is no propagation, and again, you use it with file and directory inherit. And this one's similar to the last one, except for. Only files and directories beneath the directory are affected. And what that means is, I'll show you. <laughs> this is probably hard to read. <laughs> um, OK, so here's my example directory, full, full permission set on, on all the entries. I set, um, let's see, file and directory inherit. Let's see, let's go back here. Yeah, okay. And so I make a directory called sub1. I list the ACL on that, and you see that it inherits the FD, I, I, capital I here, indicating it was inherited. Now I create another directory under that subdirectory called foo1. And again, we, we see that it progresses to inherit in, in the manner you would expect it to be inherited. And then we come back here, and now I set n, the no, I set the no propagate flag on that directory. And this, very, this is to show that it's there, that, that that is set. Now I make another directory, sub2, and I list the ACL, you see that that does in fact inherit it. It, it looks, it, it works as you would expect. Now we create a new sub subdirectory for one under that sub two that doesn't have the propagate or that has the no propagate flag set, and you see that it doesn't, it doesn't get it. It gets the the default ACL. So the end flag makes it stop one level down. Yes, that's, that's exactly what it does. Okay, capital I, that means that's just there to indicate that the entry's been inherited. And, well, I think there's actually like, there's four, four types, but we only use two in FreeBSD, and that's allow and deny. And uh, the allow means these, these access permissions, inheritance flags are allowed, to deny means they're denied. Um, and yeah, this is key right here. ACLs are easy, and you guys, you know how they work now. I, I should hope so. And you've already asked questions, but um, is, are there any more questions? Will. Yes. Um, the early versions of Samba that I used on systems that didn't support ACLs. <laughs> So, Samba in particular, so older versions of Samba, pre-4 Samba, Samba 3 and before, they, didn't, they had no understanding of ACLs. 
maybe POSIX ACLs. But the, it, and, and so we had all these, all these directives, and their sole purpose in life was to pretend to be Windows ACLs. But, but they never quite, as you say, they never aligned. So, so there was a lot of black magic voodoo to make, to, to make it pretend like it worked. And, and it never quite worked right. You know, there was always this or that, or you know, this problem, that problem. Starting from Samba 4 onward, it, it's, they, you, you've been, you, they've eliminated almost all of that. Now, now Samba has a very, very good understanding of ACLs, and, and it is almost a one-to-one -one mapping, short of there are some slight differences between NFS4 ACLs and Windows ACLs, which that could be another talk in itself. But the, the, they, they maps almost directly. You no longer have to do all of, all of those weird directives, and I know that because I, I've dealt with that for years, for years. And, and in the story, when you go look on the internet, you get all of this advice like, you need to set these these options in your Sama Conf. You need to set these. You need to CH mod and and no, no, you don't, because because you break everything. So, th does that answer your question? <laughs> All right. Anyone else? I'm just gonna add a comment to that. <laughs> that every year, as, as time goes on, Samba and alternate SMB implementations like <coughs> Solaris. Um, <laughs> the, the, the NT to, well, it's NFS, but sometimes it's XFS, sometimes it's whatever. They tend to get the mapping better and better and better with every release. The downside is that when things go wrong, they go sideways in even heavier <coughs> and heavier <coughs> than ever before. Because now you're into even weirder corner cases. and. Every once in a while, you get one of those corner cases for no apparent reason. I was some idiot on a Windows workstation with admin work privileges, typically you, uh, <coughs> who's managed to do something that it just can't quite translate, and then you're, in my experience, typically blowing away all of these skills recursively. Yep. Game control. I see. I've seen a lot of that. Yeah. Now, it like, used to happen on a monthly basis. Now it happens maybe on a yearly basis. Um, but it used to also be fixable. Now it's blow away the ACLs and re-ACL everything. Is that... Do you think it's ever going to go away? I, I don't think that's going to go away, no. Um, <laughs> I mean, on FreeNAS, we, you know, ZFS with NFS for ACLs, I, I've been very happy with, with the way it maps to Windows. I mean, it, it's almost exact, and, and it works very well. Yet still, as I explained at the beginning, I am constantly, constantly working on this, the, the most minute issues because, because of what people read on the internet or they don't understand, and, and, and they, all of their experiences from older versions of Samba, and so they're just doing stuff they're not supposed to, and reading to, to CH mod recursively this and that and and, and, and I've, I've taken measures to eliminate that but that no matter what you do you know people are going to screw it up. So. so the takeaway is users <laughs> I would never say that. <laughs> no, we, we love our users. We want them. We want more. We just want them to let us handle things like that. I, it's not very common that I see. Um, I'm sure it's absolutely used. Um, I, what's that? Yeah, like in organizations, I mean, yeah, they're absolutely, I mean, you, you, that's a prior where these, this best comes in because you have all these access lists for this department, for this department, for this department, and these are read only, and this, you know, yeah, it's.
traditional Unix permissions, but um, Puppet is bad at both putting a recursive complete managed directory underneath the Puppet recursive managed directory. So, big scales can handle recursion for me. Yeah, they're great. They're terrific. I recommend them. I mean, rsync only, rsync understands POSIX ACLs. If you rsync locally, in my experience, it's mostly fine. I actually wrote a patch for rsync to do this years ago. Um, but if you, if you rsync from one system to another, then yeah, it's not, it's, it's just not going to work. It doesn't have that knowledge of, of NFS4 ACLs. Um, where, whereas, like I said, the, I wrote a patch years ago at, that would, and even that was kind of hacky, but it would at least synchronize them across systems, and if it didn't, it wasn't able to resolve the user group idea, you know, do a, a number, you know, do the, the UID or GID number. Um, Back as far as backup, I mean, I I don't know um, ZFS Sun. You know, <laughs> uh, I, I I really don't know. I I there, there's not a lot out there. I found that there's not a lot of software out there that works with 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 NFS four ACLs very well, if at all. I that's been my experience. Not to say that it doesn't exist, but. Anyone else? All right. Mav. We told you that uh, Windows ACLs are mostly much to NFS. So before, once we have, is there something significant we should know which doesn't, doesn't much? Um, uh, there's some problems, uh, like the, the synchronize, that doesn't, um, that's definitely not a problem. Um, there's some, Owner, group, owner, ownership issues I've noticed. Um, yeah, you asked the one question I didn't prepare for. <laughs> so I can't come up with anything specific off the top of my head, short of I, I have seen some problems with, with ownership of files and directories and, and how it doesn't. Windows, Windows has this concept where you can change ownership and it doesn't map 100% to our user and group ownership. That's probably the biggest, the biggest one that I've seen. You mean that we may not have some group which Windows has? No, no, what I mean is, so we, on any given file, we have user ownership and group ownership. Windows doesn't have that. Windows just has the concept of owner, and that, that could be a user or a group. And so that mapping from whatever this is, this object that owns the Windows file, does not map 100% completely to our Unix way of life of user and group ownership. Does that make sense? Yeah. Even though it doesn't make sense? <laughs> yeah, okay. okay. Anybody else? Any more questions? All right, thank, thanks guys, thanks for coming to my talk. <laughs>